work for the uh, Department of Employment and Economic Development, the Small Business Assistance Office. We like to put on this meeting once a month with uh, colleagues and our resource partners to provide information and a resource to, to business owners about what they can um, ask us, what they need to know, what they, what they don't know. Um, we have quite a few different resource partners here today, and I will hand it off to my colleague, Neela Malgar. Greetings, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, and thank you, Mark, for your leadership with this, and especially the topic that you're going to be discussing today. I know you and Charles and others have put uh, a lot of time into this. Um, this call we host every month, trying to find a platform for businesses to connect with each other and service providers across the state. So we thank our partners, uh, Minnesota Chamber, uh, for being part of this call, for helping share this call with their members, also the SBA and Better Business Bureau, and we thank the entrepreneurial support orgs on this call for getting the word out to the businesses that you serve. We want to make sure that we can help our businesses, our entrepreneurs better navigate the wealth of expertise and resources across the state. Um, so with that, I'm going to let uh, pass it back to Mark and, and once again, just really commend the amount of hours that Mark and Charles invested in this guidebook and excited that not only will we now have a printed version of this book, but we are looking at different um, vehicles to share this information with you and the and, and businesses. Um, and, and Mark will walk you through that. Um, but looking forward to hearing your questions and knowing, um, gr bringing greater awareness to this resource for you. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for your time. And, and thank you, Mark, for helping lead this call and, and your work to produce this guidebook. Sure, happy to do it. We have our 42nd edition of a guide to starting a business in Minnesota. And Neil, if I can do this correctly, let's see. I need to click on share and it should pull up the handy dandy guide. Can everyone see that? Cool. You say, well, what looks different about this? You've only done 40, 42 uh, editions of this. This year, with uh, with some good prodding and some uh, exploration on what kind of options we can give to people, this book is now in a format that's called Flipping Book. And literally, it will flip the pages uh, as you proceed through the, the guide. Um, I've used it just a little bit. I've, I've seen the application available uh, with other publications, but we wanted to do this to make it more of a, of a user-friendly type uh, experience. Um, there are some uh, some neat functions with this. If I can go back to the first page, we see you can take a note any place within the document, um, which is a, a good tool if you find something that you hadn't known about or you want to ask later. Um, the document you can go through page by page. Uh, what I realized earlier today when I was looking at it, kind of like with a with a regular book. Uh, if you want to delve deep into the book, you can just click on a section over on the right and that will pull up a, a section of the book and just jump you right right to it. Again, this is our 42nd edition of the book. If you're not familiar uh, with it, we'll just walk you through a, a little bit of it. This is the encyclopedia of how to get a business started in Minnesota. It's not the end all to all questions, but it is a very, very good starting reference point to actually probably all your questions. In the inside cover, we have our contact information, email, uh, phone number, uh, website. Um, and then with the table of contents here, I will be working on that to make that hyperlinked also. Uh, but for right now, when we when we put it up, it, this part isn't hyperlinked, but you can break down the, the contents of the guide uh, like this. The, the first basically 60, 65 pages of the guide are about what type of business structure do you want to choose? There's different tax implications. We go through a, a definition of what all the different types of structures are and how to register that with the with the Secretary of State. Let me just jump to page 62. You should be able to just go right up on top, go to whatever page you want. And again, what I uh, what I find really cool about this this new format is it's it's a little more user 
uh, friendly in the fact that you can feel like you're actually looking through something than just a a single screen at all times. But you can you can change your uh, uh, your magnification. Um, and I just want to point out within um, this version of the guide, which is all, the only difference between this version. Uh, our electronic version and our print copy is that we have all the hyperlinks within the guide are live. So if you get to the section on filing documents with the Secretary of State, uh, what's that? What's that uh, fee rate? We have the the schedule here, but you can go right right to the links we have available in the guide and um, uh, be able to jump right to that section. So um, it is a uh, somewhat of a of a daunting task, and it takes some meticulous care to make sure that the information in the book is correct. Um, but I, I think that's a that's a really cool feature uh, to use this this type of format. Is you, you feel like you're you're reading something, you can always um, add a note where you want to, stop where you want to. Um, so again, if we go back to the table of contents, the first section of the of the guide talks about the basics of a of a business forming it registering it talk about uh regulatory considerations and as you can see we have different sections all here there's a section on business financing uh issues for employers um we go here we really try and break down subsets of all the different categories important ones business taxes and um sources of uh, information and assistance um, and then what we really spend a lot of time is on our resource directory. So if we go to page 279, this is really more um, uh, encyclopedic. In this section, we have um, gone through what we try to find is the most useful information on on, on, on different subjects. Cooperatives may not reach a lot of people, but we do every once in a while have businesses that contact us about that. So all these, again, these pages are all uh, figured with um, the uh, name of the organization, what type of category under federal. We have the, the links to, to different sections and all this information uh, will, if we can, will include an email address too. So it will, um, it will allow you to go to a section of the book Find the information you want. Say you want to contact, for example, the, the U.S. Department of Agriculture. You can click on that, and that will get you right in to their site. Um, and what I've tried to do, and in all the staff here at the Small Business Office, is not have it be a, a high level. If it's if it's something that's a link to an exact page where you need to get to, that information is here in the guide. And it's really nice. I just have one browser window opens when I click on a link. It uh, it puts up. Yeah, the link uh, site that I that I was just at. Um, also, part of what we do, and we've done this for again decades, is we are um, the keeper of license and permit information for the state of Minnesota. We provide that in a summarized manner uh, here in the guide. Let's get out to the director of licenses and permits. Go to 333. And if you are looking for a name of a license or permit, we list them in here. This is the beginnings of where um, we gather all the information on license and permits. We also manage the Minnesota e-licensing website, which is right here. It's linked. It's basically it's a summary of all the state licenses and permits, either for occupational or uh, recreational licensing and kind of anything in, in between. So what we've done, it started in the guide just as, as listings, and now we've developed, again, that, that website, License Minnesota, to expand on that. But within this one guide, if you are looking for different types of activities, say you're like, well, I just need to figure out if this business is licensed, you can come to our guide and look in and see that the different categories um, of licensing. For example, counseling that goes to the, the Minnesota uh, Board of Behavioral Health and Therapy that will get you into their website. And most state websites, just uh, for your information, is they've really done a much better job on putting licensing information in on their website, public information, really trying to make that 
uh, a better user experience. So again, what, what we try and do with the guide is, is provide a resource to um, view and then come back to. Um, and in this, this format, I, I find it to be very useful. You can do a search. Um, I think I did that one earlier today, business plans. If I just type it in, and if you want um, an exact match, you can click on that, and then it will jump you to different sections of the of the guide where it has information referencing business plans. So that is a, a super useful tool. Um, the The guide is available in this format through the the link. I believe we just put that up here. It's also available to be downloaded in just a, a regular PDF format. Um, so we we want to get this information out to you in as in as different formats or as many different usable formats as possible. Um, so I'm certainly welcome uh, welcoming to uh, taking any kind of comments on the book. If you want to know where something is, can you still get a hard copy? Yes, we just received those. We are mailing those out. Is the guide going to be available in libraries? Yes, hard copy. And then hopefully we are developing, uh, we are developing our ebook, and hopefully we'll get that into libraries soon. So that will be another option for uh, for people to use. Um, and as you just page through the guide, it is not something uh, that we recommend that you have to read from page one to page three sixty seven. It's really going back to the table of contents. It's a guide to give you information on on business in general. And as as most everybody knows, developing or starting a business isn't necessarily linear. It can be, what do I want to do? Does that mean I have rules to follow? Do I have to have insurance? Things like that. Um, but we try and put it in a format here that basically puts puts you on a path. Usually it, you, you choose a form of business structure. That's your basis. We give you that that knowledge. Uh, to research here, then we talk about um, how you do business taxes and your and your uh, business financing, and then um, really the the guide is meant to be something to keep coming back to if you need to, um, especially with the employment law. There's a lot of new new things this year. I know in the last meeting we talked about ESST coming up in the next two years, the uh, paid family medical leave. Also, the city of Minneapolis, the city of St. Paul have their own employment law rules. So that is something that, that we touch upon here. So again, the guide is used as a, as a reference to either getting you the exact information in detail or at least getting you to the, uh, to the next point on that. And then I would like to stop talking <laughs> and ask my colleague, Charles Schaefer, if he has other comments on our guide. Oh, thank you, Mark. Uh, as you very ably explained, the purpose here is we have a lot of available information in the guide, and with this new version, we wanted to increase its accessibility. That uh, when you have 300 plus pages, even those of us who work with the guide quite regularly, uh, even those of us who wrote it, uh, sometimes find it's uh, difficult to find stuff that you want. So the finding aids that are incorporated in the new uh, flipping book, I think, are very uh, useful for everybody. And the ability to, sort of as, ta as uh, Mark indicated, to do things like make notes as you go along mm -hmm. to take advantage of the, the uh, what they call the uh, uh, yellow pages effect, where you can uh, write down the stuff as you go through, it is very useful. So uh, we're hopeful that uh, but among that version, the uh, normal uh, hard copy version and the uh, digital version that we have online, uh, we'll be able to touch a lot of bases for people. And as Mark indicated, the thing to remember about that is every version, regardless of how it's presented, well, is uh, the same. They are uh, they look the same, they have the same look and feel, they have the same content, the same pagination. So you can switch back and forth between them. You can have someone looking at one and another person looking at another, and you're seeing the same text in the same context. So uh, we're very pleased with the publication's uh, progress here. I, I see we have a couple questions that have come up. Um, is it, I don't want to mispronounce it. Is it Nishan?
Deshaun, you're on mute. Can we take you off? There we go. Sorry on Teams, the mute button is high versus low. Um, <laughs> Uh, thanks, thanks for the resource and for the overview here. Uh, question, um, if it's useful or if there's a particular section that is more useful for business owners that are already operative and so they've gotten past that sort of founding stage but are struggling to get integrated into uh, like proper resources for expansion or to be understanding how to navigate the many grant and partnership uh, opportunities or you hear you see a lot of posts like deed this and deed grants for that um, are those sorts of resources or pathways um, listed in, in this guide at any place or um, I'm not sure if there's an, an umbrella term that would sort of encompass some of what I'm describing yeah, very valid question yes I would say in the resource directory if we go out to the resource directory, I'm just looking at it here. Let me go back well, and share it. Well, yep. well Mark mm -hmm. is looking for that too. Uh, you know, you bring up a concern that we hear all the time in our Office of Small Business and Innovation and looking for, for different ways to provide that information for you internally, but also with partners across the state. Since every business is so unique, right? What you need at, at certain times of your, your journey, business journey might vary. So uh, Mark will share what's in this book and then there are some other links that we are working on and other digital tools we're working on in our office that might help you with that. Uh, but the link that I'll put in the, in the chat now is a tableau of all of our partners across the state, um, whether that be part of our Launch Minnesota network, all of our SBDC offices, mm -hmm. our small business partnership grantees that act on the behalf of DEED um, to help provide technical assistance, subject matter expertise, and to help um, where, when and where your business uh, has needs. So I'll put that in now. Um, that that tableau is new. We've just uh, awarded some uh, and brought on some new grantees, but that will be the, the live link um, that we'll continue to keep maintained and updated. So sorry to interrupt there, Mark, but no, go ahead perfect. and I'll add the I'll add the link. So, Nishant, what I would say is, since I know the book really well, um, if you look in the um, local assistance for small business, we try and use a overall header or, or a descriptor. So, uh, in here, um, we've got accelerators, we have uh, help from management. It's really within this section, all the, all the different partners that we work with, SCORE, um, the SBDCs, um, kind of depends on where you are, what you need, um, but this would be the, the area. I mean, management development assistance for minority-owned business owners. We try and add as, as many different categories in. So it's really taking a look at the resource directory in this case and under that, that management um, uh, assistance and help. And I hope that answers your question. Take we are also off. working on another tool that has not been finalized yet where businesses will be able to um, have more of an interactive tableau where the, you can say where you live and what you're looking for, whether that be a loan or a grant or technical assistance, and it will narrow down, down some of the programs and resources that we have available at DEED. That's just not quite ready yet to share today. It's still in the pilot um, stage, but um we we hear you and uh we're working on ways to address that and there was a, a question in the chat about adding a table of contacts contents um and i think it was already um answered but the the flipping books is uh searchable so any words that you're curious about can um you don't necessarily need it yep table of contents. <laughs> Ishelle, nice to see you. Uh, hi, Mila, nice to see you all. I was just scaring. This is amazing what you all have done, so congratulations on the hard work. Um, I did notice that you have Elevate Business here, and um, if we've got updates, so we're now branded Elevate Hennepin, and we've got a website link, where should we direct that? to me directly. Um, I thought I put Elevate Hennepin in. Uh, maybe I didn't. 
basically send it to me uh, that will be updated what's really cool about this version of the guide and the just the, the regular pdf version you give it to me within two minutes it's up it's ready to go it's live it's the it's the correct information um i really try and do my best to get as current information as possible and and there's still like you said if you just rebranded some things changed the our intent certainly with the, uh, the electronic version is to have as current and as accurate information as possible so again just send it to me directly mark dot simmer at state dot mn dot us we've Perfect. also just impl we've also just implemented a new in input form where you can just enter your information and and address and and we and the team will will get that sent out to you And that link's been provided in the chat. Sometimes hard to remember everyone's individual emails. Any other questions about the guidebook or about your business or about other resources? Well, Neela, this... can people order a hard copy still? And the answer is yes. <laughs> send it to the, the the small business assistance office website or sorry the email I, I put that in the in the chat yes we do have hard copies available uh we are trying to make the guide available in as many different formats as as users want want to use it in so certainly we can mail a copy out to you i have Hi. a quick question yeah. and maybe maybe it'll come up later um but my question is there's so many resources thank you so much um <laughs> is, there, <laughs> is there like a, a, a like the first person we should talk to or a person that knows about all the things um if we presented a business idea to that person they would say oh you should check out this program or this program or 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 yes. that or do we need to yes okay yeah. We we hear you and we understand that that is that is a it is a blessing in the sense that we have so many wonderful organizations and individuals that are willing to help businesses. But in a way, it's a challenge because you don't know what that first step is. So one thing that we can offer uh, from from Deed um, and, and our perspective and others can 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 share. But um, our Office of Small Business Assistance that Charles leads, Mark's there, Melody um, is, is part of that, will answer your emails, your phone calls. There's also that input form that we've shared in the chat, and I'll share that again, where you can um, let us know what your needs are. They have such a, a wealth of knowledge about um, the resources that are available, what people, you know, what you may or may not qualify for, or even better yet, the next uh good referral, right? So is that to an SBDC office? Is that some uh, partner in the Launch Minnesota network? Is that some special funding with SBA? Is that a, a, a funding opportunity somewhere else? So um, they 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 usually have all the answers, I have to say. Charles and Mark are very wise. I learn from them all the time, but um, you know, they, they also can point you to the right direction, right? So if it's, it, if, um, you know, as you as you see here, there's just a lot of information. So that's what we've tried to do now too this year, is as have uh, the the small business assistance office be that first step um, to to help direct you to the right place. Thank you, Mark. You'll be getting an email. Woohoo! Yes, as I <laughs> as I'm working on updating the guide, literally as we're speaking, <laughs> to, to really to really answer your question, and I think I can say this for almost all the our resource partners find one of us we will listen to what you want to do and we can say oh i don't do this but maybe don jackson with the with the sba he's 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 a great guy for that they, he's got this information so there are there's there's not a wrong way to go i mean most of us know about everybody else and what they do but certainly we we take every and and all uh calls emails so yeah we'd be glad to, to speak with anybody Any other questions on the guide? None. All right, I was going to um, let's see if I can introduce Ray McCoy. Ray, if you're here, can't see on the screen here. Here, my dear. Mr. McCoy, 
Would you please tell us about the Employer Reasonable Accommodation Fund, which you manage? Yes, most well, certainly. Um, um, I apologize, so, I can't recall from Friday. Did you give me an updated of that state aid whoops. construction? I did, but I went a new one Let's today. Let's try this, Ray. Let me mute all. Yeah, so. Have you muted, Ray? Mute all. Should have like should have known that. All right, how's everybody now? <laughs> Sorry Thanks, about man. the mishap there. So, as I was saying, in mute mode, Ray McCoy, program coordinator for the Employer Reasonable Accommodation Fund. And so, in short, what it is is the Department of or Deed has actually created this fund due to the you know, work from the legislature where we are able to reimburse employers, small to medium sized employers, up to 30,000 per fiscal year for expenses relating to providing reasonable accommodations for either job applicants or employees with disabilities. And that's because we want to help employers, you know, look at and overcome any sort of perceived or real financial barriers towards, you know, helping people with disabilities achieve gainful employment. So really quickly, I'll just go through the process, which you would do um, an employee or an applicant comes to you with um, stating that they have a disability. You would do the internal process as needed. Afterwards, we really recommend that you schedule a free consultation to discuss what types of accommodations are needed, as well as look and see, you know, prior to purchasing anything, if you meet the requirements and what kind of accommodations are being purchased. But after that consultation, like I said, it's free to, you know, businesses. You could do it as many times as you want. Uh, you can then go ahead, purchase the accommodation, and once the accommodation is purchased, then you would complete our application form, which is on our website, and I will send that here through the chat once I'm done. Uh, I think somebody had a question. Are you going forward or? But really quickly, this is the last piece of this. So as mentioned earlier, we will reimburse you up to 30,000 per fiscal year, which you know, ends right now on June 30th. So let's say that even after June 30th, you needed, you know, you had more accommodations that needed to be reimbursed, then we would be able to, you know, reimburse you another 30,000 next fiscal year. So that goes, that encapsulates both one-time and ongoing reasonable accommodations. So for one-time accommodations, the purchase must be at least $250, but the most we can reimburse you for is $15,000. And those can be things like, you know, wheelchair ramps, ergonomic workstations, and what have you. For ongoing accommodations, on the other hand, there are no minimum to maximum, you know, requirements in terms of how much you would need to pay. And as you know, those things would be things like um, job coaching or sign language interpretation. But overall, you just want to make sure that whatever expenses you have, as long as it, you know, does not exceed 30,000, that's something that we can reimburse you for. All right. So we're asking, let's see, a few questions. Are grants reimbursed? Are the grants reimbursements as well? So I'm not sure what you mean by that. I'll whoever just, asked uh, the question, yeah. Yep. Maybe you have a little uh, definition, whoever asked the question. So what this little definition of who has asked the question? I, I believe Sunday was talking to um, his, regarding a previous question about some grants that might be available. Oh, and, okay. And so, um, the SBA and our director of uh, SBDC responded. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, so you misunderstood what I was referring to as reimbursement. So I know I went through this kind of quickly. So as a business, you would purchase a reasonable accommodation for the applicant or employee within your business. And 
what you would do is that you would apply through our site and submit proofs of purchase and we would reimburse you that cost. So it's not that we're giving a grant, you know, prior to which there's a lot of misunderstanding with that, but what's happening is that we would reimburse you the cost that you incurred for that particular accommodation up to a certain limit, like I said, 30,000 per fiscal year. So yeah, outside of that, I will leave our information here in the chat, you know, Great. how to, you know, get a hold of us as well as the website to the Employer Reasonable Accommodation Fund program. So yeah, if there, just in case you think of any other questions moving forward, um, where do we confirm that we meet the employer eligibility requirements? So again, I didn't have a lot of time to discuss that, but really the eligibility requirements that come down to are if you make 500 or you have 500 employees or less, and if you make 5 million in gross annual revenue or less, then you would qualify. And so if you're not sure of that, then you could contact us because that would be part of the consultation where we can, you know, talk about that and cover that. Yep. So it doesn't matter if you only have two employees in that, that's something that you could still, you could take part in. So again, as long as it's not more than 500 employees, then you'd be good. Um, so started my business in July last year and purchased items. Could I be reimbursed for those items? So actually anything from July 1st on like, so July 1st, 2023, moving forward are items as long as they are reasonable accommodations. Yes, they can be reimbursed. That's crazy. Yeah. All right. So computers, yep, we have reimbursed computers for um, employees. Really what it comes down to is um, as long as it falls under the definition of what a reasonable accommodation is, which would help the employee be able to do their job better and what have you. So for example, let's say that we had somebody who is an employee, you know, had an injury and they had to work from home and they needed office equipment of all kinds, computers, printers and stuff to be purchased that they could use while working from home. That's acceptable. You know, that's something that we were able to reimburse. All right, nope. So again, great question, David. And this is what's really great about this program. We do not require any sort of documentation or proof of your business being the size that it is because you know again we don't have a lot of red tape within this program the only thing we need are proofs of purchase and on those obviously the date it's purchased the amount as well as the you know description of the accommodation so we really try to make this program as easy and as, as accessible as to you know the business Sorry, I missed this, but where can I find the information? I will post the website up here so that you can get all the information and it has our flyer and everything else. And again, if there's any Perfect. questions, I'll also have an email up. So, yep. Can the funds run out? Absolutely. Yep. So we have 1.6 million this fiscal year that we'll give out and the state will give us another 1.6 million between, you know, next fiscal year. Um, can you tell us the number of entities allowed for reimbursement i'm not sure i follow you mean the amount of you know the amount of things that you can get that would be reimbursed is that what you mean right. i'm just going to assume that means yes so you can be reimbursed for you know you can purchase 10 different things again as long as that reimbursement as long as it is an eligible reasonable accommodation and you are it you don't exceed the thirty thousand dollars because once you spend more than thirty thousand in fiscal year then we can't reimburse you so yeah another thing what does what is the normal turnaround that's good so 30 days prior to you know 30 days from when we approve 
that's when you would um, expect your reimbursement. Does the CEO qualify? Yep. It does not matter whether it's full-time, part-time, whatever your position is. If you have a disability and need accommodations, then yes, you would be. And obviously, if the business fits within the guidelines, then you would be eligible for ERAF reimbursement under this program. Great questions. All right, so. Ray has worked really hard getting the word out on this important program. So uh, you can tell today, Ray, that there's a lot of interest. <laughs> That's awesome. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, right. this is great. Quick, quick question. I, th I think it was missed in the chat, but does this apply for clients and or program participants? So. Or just staff? So with you mean like program participants that you're placing in jobs? Or clients that you're placing within different jobs? Uh, well, it's not really. No, I guess that then I guess that answers my question. <laughs> if we have program partic to participants that need assistance to so, participate, whether it be translation or Braille or. Yeah, so with that, it applies to, you know, the employees within an organization, but let's say that you also place clients within, you know, qualifying organization, which is what we're doing. We're working with all the different vocational rehab services here to see if we can like, you know, put this program within so that they can, you know, get access to the funds. You know, so like when let's say that I'm placing somebody within a job, I talk to the employer about ERAF. I would also be able to, I would also say, hey, you know, there's this program that you could use to purchase accommodations for the client. They do so, then they would get the reimbursement. So again, I don't know if that answers your question directly, but yeah, this is meant for either employees or applicants for, you know, a qualifying organization. Okay, yeah, that answered my question. Um, so my next question would be, are there any programs that would help organizations be able to provide accommodations for their participants or clients? Yep, so one thing that we do is that we partner a lot with the different organizations out there that provide services such as, um, I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank here, uh, job coaching. So let's say that as an employer, you need a job coach, then we would look in our network and see where you're located at and was like, all right, here's a list of job coaches that you can reach out to. And once the employer and, you know, says, hey, I want to go with this person, I'm paying them this. Once they make that payment, they can submit for reimbursement. And they could do so on an ongoing basis until they obviously exceed the limit. I've also gotten a question of, is it first come, first serve? Yes, it is, but no worries because we got quite a bit of room here. Uh, the tax write-off question for these purchases, that's something you would want to talk to your um, accountant about. You know, I don't want to, you know, for an answer with tax questions, but this fund is not taxable. So, like I said, you want to talk to your accountant, your tax person regarding what is, you know, write off or what have you. I have two questions. Mm -hmm. Sure. Hey, everyone. Yeah. So, my first question would be um, I am into career development, training, coaching, and mentoring. And most of the time, the students or my clients may not have the means to learn and they would need computers and stuff like that. So I don't know. I think the question is related to the last question that was asked. Can they be qualified for something like this for me to for this program to be able to help them with um, computers and stuff like that for their learning? Would they be employees of yours of any type or like volunteers or whatnot? Yes, that's how the program is structured. So through the program, they get training, coaching, mentoring to get them ready for the job market and then they also volunteer that's how they build their experience yep so since again being that this program is does not have limits on what type of employee as long as they are an employee of that type then that would be something that you know could be done okay thank you and my second question would be how do i get on your list of job coaches 
So what you would do is you would, you know, you could just reach out to me and actually, like I said, I'll, I'll put in the information. Let me do that right now. Okay. I'll put in my, the general email and phone number, but you could just say like, I have this, you know, just reach out to me. Let me know that you have some volunteers that need some coaching and I will send you a list of coaches that are within your area. And then you could just, you know, then you would reach out to them directly. Okay. I think maybe you didn't understand my second question. How do I get on your list of coaches? To be oh, Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. L actually, again, send me an email. Let me ask. Um, let me, you know, let me go ahead and talk to our vocational rehab services as well as um, SSB about that. Again, sorry about the misunderstanding there, but mm -hmm. yeah, send me an email with your information and I will go ahead and, you know, forward your information on to them and just say Thank that you're you interested in being a coach. Appreciate it. All right, so you can email us um, on the job coaching list, which, yes, um, just send me, you know, just send me an email saying that you need job coaching and where you are, and I will go ahead and get that list out to you. Thank you. And then get everybody deadlines or special dates. Um, I wouldn't say necessarily deadlines or special. Well, besides the special date that I talked about, which is like, let's say that somebody has purchases that are prior to July 1st of last year, then those are purchases that we cannot reimburse. So I guess, um, I don't know if that falls within what you were asking, but that's um, just one piece that, you know, if we can, you know, you would just want to keep in mind. Okay, thanks, Ray. Yep. Great. Thanks for the thanks for that quick two minutes, right? <laughs> There's a it's a it's a great program for employers and obviously there are funds available and I'm glad to see people wanting to take advantage of it. Awesome. Is this in Minnesota or Minneapolis? Nope, it's statewide. Any business that is within Minnesota that fits the guidelines can do so. So also, just really quick, because I don't want to take up any more time. Thank you, Mark. But we have a Thanks, Q and A. Yep, we have a FAQ on our website. So, yep, great website. I've looked at it. Perfect. Thanks. All right, Neela, I had a couple of questions come in for the meeting. One I answered already. Uh, back to a person directly. They were asking about setting up a group home in Dakota County. Um, so I answered that person directly. Um, I was surprised to learn that Dakota County, Dakota County has a moratorium currently on, on that type of business. Um, and then I am looking for my second question that was submitted. And I will grab that in one second. And I think it might be a question that the uh, SBDCs can help uh, answer here. Well, let me copy it, throw it in the chat, and then I'll, I'll just read it, make it a little, little quicker here. So there's that. Uh, problems this person has experienced at the time are not knowing where to turn for help with business financial management. My accounting firm is just focusing on taxes and I'm going to hire them for QB entries, but they don't seem to want to look at the bigger financial picture to help me make mid and long-term decisions. Um, finding an office to re relocate my business this summer in a safe neighborhood where I could relocate as well. Uh, ideally, I have an office with security in the building uh, including the uh, later hours daily. So if anyone from the SBDCs has some information on that, that long-term planning, that would be, that'd be very useful. Yeah, absolutely. What I would recommend is contact your local small business development center, your SBDC. A lot of them have consultants right on staff that are either QuickBooks certified or they can partner up with either um, a neighboring adjoining SBDC consulting office that could get you linked right to that. And again, all of our consulting is at no cost to you. Um, many of them, you know, are starting to QuickBooks is something that is more and more trendy again. And a lot of um, our offices are seeing that as a demand as well. So we certainly have QuickBooks consultants statewide that can certainly assist or even at the local office. And same with that, that second question, um, mm -hmm. depending on where you're located, 
you know, they, they might have connections with the local city or county economic development groups, which can help you with some site selection or might have some listings that are available um, through their publications of what property would be available for either purchase or lease. Thanks, Andy. You're very informative as the director of the SBDCs, just to, just to give you a quick intro there. Yeah, I, I, I think that hits a nail on the head right there. Uh, we just had a question in the chat. Uh, will these links be put out? Yeah, I just answered that I will put together a bulletin, just a, a quick uh, message that will be sent out to everybody with basically the the links that we've talked about, uh, a link to the uh, the, the guide in the, in, the flip, in the flipping book um, uh, format. Um, do we have any other questions? It can be questions related to what we talked about today or different questions. Mm -hmm. or questions that you have, uh, you know, that you'd like your peers to answer. Or if there's updates from others on the call, SBA or Minnesota Chamber that you want to share with others, please use this time too for any quick updates. Yes, thanks, Neela. This is uh, Don Jackson with the SBA. Uh, I was just seeing some here that there are some individuals that are out there looking for that financial assistance. Uh, we do want to let everybody know that, of course, the SBA itself does not do the direct lending other than disasters. It's to continue working with our lending partners on our lending guarantee programs, such as 7A or 504. Uh, those individuals that are looking for that access to capital, uh, like Marcus said, is to make sure that you're using the resources that are available. And you don't have to use just one. You can use them all at the same time, be it the SBDCs, SCORE, the Small Business um, Assistance Office. Use all of these tools directly so they can help you out. Uh, for those entities that are the for-profit businesses, um, again, that term grant that goes out there, uh, yes, the state has a lot of great grants, some, uh, uh, excuse me, or some private entities may have some grants, but at the federal level, our grants are really limited on what they can be used for. So that's where our loan guarantee program comes into play. We'll help you get that access to capital if you have uh, issues getting a traditional uh, loan. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to our office. We'll happily to talk you through some of the programs. Uh, what are some of the requirements? You can also use uh, SCORE and SPDC. Um, back to you. Thanks, Doug. Just a quick plug from the Minnesota Chamber over here. We last week released a guide to business funding. So it's a lot of kind of the SBA D materials, but it also lists um, all the D programs in one place and kind of who you need to contact for each of them. That's great. Thanks, Sarah. All right, anything else today? Yes, thanks, Eric. Um, uh, Eric David from the uh, PCA uh, wanted to give you some information. Uh, you threw it in the chat here about loans. Uh, also information, basically Eric can answer anything for the uh, PCA. He's with the Small Business Ombudsman uh, Program. So. He's also a really good resource uh, for uh, for business owners. We have a question here or a statement applying to contracts with the state. Um, we can certainly I'll throw in in the next bulletin a link to the Office of Equity and Procurement and Apex Accelerator. That's a it's a super large. Uh, topic to to discuss here. Yes, there there are ways to become a vendor to the state and to the federal government, and the office of OEP and um, and Apex Accelerators can help people uh, navigate that that pathway. But yes, those are two very very large sources for uh, for vendors uh, to um, have as clients. Also, if you have suggestions for the topics of our future calls. Please enter that into the chat or let us know. We want to make sure there are topics that are the most relevant to you. I just had a quick question. My name is Danielle. 
I'm wondering if the links that were shared in the chat, if they were going to be sent out to let us like in a follow up email. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I put that in the chat. I'll go over the, the meeting transcript and I will grab all that information and, oh, and awesome. send it Thank out. you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, Neela, there was one question about someone wanted to discuss if we could find someone um, about how to run a or dealing with running a rental business that rents goods rather than real estate. Um, I don't know if we have anybody in particular that I could think of that that would be able uh, to do that, but certainly contact your local SBDC or your score office for people with uh, experience on that if you have uh, particular questions on, on that type of, of business. Mel, I think, I think that was Mel you okay. have a question? Yes, sorry. I wasn't able to put anything in the chat for some reason on my phone. Um, I was wondering about uh, resources related to legal and compliance issues for small businesses. Mine is a little bit more complex because I am a mental health therapist, but our board isn't the most communicative or easily accessible. Um, so yeah, just wondering about that. Let me cut. Let me paste. Uh, <laughs> as far as for for legal advice, that would be a resource partner we use is Legal Core. Um, okay, great. They provide free legal assistance for a small business. I've worked with uh, one of their reps uh, at quite a few different meetings. Super good organization. So yes, Legal Core threw it right in the chat there. Fantastic. There. Thank you so much. Yeah, great mm -hmm. resource for you moving forward. Yep. Was there any other uh, questions? Uh, kind of a kind of a question statement. Uh, best resources for rural area businesses for employee recruitment and retention. I would certainly defer any kind of answer from me over to the uh, small business development centers or the chamber. Or our workforce strategists. Yep. We have regional workforce strategists in our workforce side of our agency. All right. Thank you for the topic suggestions. We will uh, let you know. Uh, we'll communicate like we did this time about the topic for next month. Uh, there's more questions coming in here. Yep, my dad wants to start a snow removal LLC. He has never had a small business before. He, he's confused on how he can pay himself. He heard that it's confusing on what you can buy and what you can't buy with a small business. Can you please provide some information on how to run an LLC? Certainly contact me directly here. Throw this back in here. Um, we can certainly give you information um, how to get a, uh, an LLC up and running. There's really good tax information. Um, from the IRS under their small business self-employed uh, section of their of their site, uh, we can certainly answer a lot of questions. Uh, that that certainly may be also bringing in a, a tax advisor or an accountant to to figure that out. But the the aspect of getting an LLC up and running, uh, we we can certainly answer that and help you help you do that. I also threw in a resource, Mark. Our our, our new five steps to starting a business. Um, that the teams put together to try to simplify that process and provide mm -hmm. for links on on where to go. And obviously, Mark is and and the small uh, business assistance office is is the first step there, but um, a key element. But um, that might help many of you too. Any other questions? This time is for you. We wanted to make sure that we allowed time for dialogue and questions that might be uh, front of mind that you need answers for and provide all these experts on this call uh, the availability to, to get the answers you need. David, do you have a question? Yeah. Hello. Um, if you're an employee of DEED, can you still 
receive these types of services if you wanted to open up a small business or is that a conflict of interest? You can absolutely contact us and okay. all the services are, are free. It's it's not dependent on, on really anything other than your interest in starting a business. Thank you. That's what I needed to hear. I will be contacting mm -hmm. Mr. Mark. We are here. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, there's a question here, um, Neela, about uh, the uh, recordings. Yeah, I'll try and grab all the recordings, uh, the links for those. Um, for the meetings, they should be on the, the Deed YouTube channel. We just have a, a couple of different channels, but I will try and grab all the links for that. And I believe since it's a regular Teams meeting, when the recording is done, you should be able to just go back to the link itself, click on it, and I believe that will uh, restart the uh, the meeting. It'll, it'll uh, play the recording. And we'll also be listing all the recordings on the website. So you could go back and look based on the topic matter. Uh, this last question here, a very simple answer is no, we do not have any uh, legal help or social security lawyer uh, that can that can help clients. Um, uh, that's that's not something the Small Business Assistance Office does. I don't know if that's an area, Andy, that the SBDCs have any referrals to. That I would need to dig in just a little bit more. I know from once it gets into a little bit of that, Gray area, yeah. um, you know, specialized service legal form might be the first aspect of it, and they might be able to refer out from there. Okay. Uh, another question: Is there a lessons learned resource for those in the very early steps of creating a business? Um, kind of like looking for pitfalls. I would say no, not a not a written resource, but I would say SCORE would be a really good resource just off the top of my head. People who've been in business um, that, that do the volunteer mentoring, I, I think they would have the most practical experience. If anyone else has a thought on that, please, please certainly uh, add that. And another question, uh, Mark, would you also be able to address the tax direction guidance for LLCs? I, I can tell you that the basic premise of how LLCs are not taxed by the IRS. But as far as tax guidance, no, we 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 do not do uh, tax guidance. And I would say for for you wanting to meet other entrepreneurs and, and learn about the the pitfalls, the highs and lows of entrepreneurship, a lot of our organizations are are working together to create stronger uh, entrepreneurial ecosystems across the state. So through our Launch Minnesota network, um, organizations are working together to create different networking events and 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 different webinars and, and different ways to engage. Same with our SBDC offices. So I put a link to a statewide calendar that multiple organizations are using, and you can search there for networking events, educational events, webinars, and so forth of what you're seeking, and maybe find some of those um, connections that you're you're looking for through those events. I'm sorry, I missed it. Where's the calendar? I, I put it in the, the chat. Um, it It is um, on the launchminnesota.com mm -hmm. website, but it's just called this Startup and Small Business Calendar. Thank you. Yeah. And it's and a, a header of that website, yeah. And yeah. I'll put it in again. Since we're almost out of time, we just had one more question on uh, nonprofit businesses. We can help with the assistance as far as what Generally, a nonprofit needs to start with registering. As far as assisting nonprofits, I would defer any information uh, beyond that to the Minnesota Council of Nonprofits. They have very good information on their website and they have some uh, manuals too. And we have almost reached the three o'clock hour, so we appreciate you spending your hour with us. Um, and any other questions that come in, I'll just watch those for a few minutes. And if I can answer them, I will send uh, an email or uh, to the person or throw uh, an answer in the um, uh, in the bulletin that I'll send out following this meeting with all the links. So with that, thanks everybody. Appreciate you coming by. We'll be back here next month. Thank you. All right. Bye, guys.